Richard James. Yeah. Can you confirm to me, mm-hmm. is it true or not, that the life of an actor is not always easy? Oh, that's cheered me up. It is. Uh, it's. That's true. Yeah. And can you also confirm to me that there are, in fact, times when you may have to take on work that um, maybe isn't something you really love, but it's there just in order to make ends meet? Yeah, all right. Well, don't rub it in. Well, yes, that, yes, that's true as well. I've done a bit of that, yeah. I thought so. Well, today's fan fact concerns the between roles of uh, a much-loved and much-missed member of the Century 21 family, Mr Ed Bishop. Oh, yeah. So... This might make you feel better, possibly, about your uh, your own career and roles. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm not sure I'm enjoying this quite as much as I hoped I would. Uh, let's see if we can change that. Uh, uh, when acting projects we were thin on the ground, Ed Bishop would often fall back on building work and interior decorating and things like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, after UFO, acting work was very thin on the ground for him in the UK. People seemed to think that after playing a leading man, he wouldn't be so interested in the kinds of smaller roles that had been his bread and butter until UFO. Mm -hmm. When, of course, he would have been if anybody had offered him any. Uh, Of course. So in the early 1970s, Ed moved back to the States to see if things uh, might go better for him out there. Unfortunately for Ed, that turned out even worse because now he found himself as just another American actor in a country that was surprisingly full of them. Uh, Whereas in the UK, (laughs) he had at least been part of a network of the sort of renter yank group who were regularly needed by British producers. Um, In fact, his American experiment seems to have only yielded two roles. A voice in an episode of the animated Star Trek. Seen it. And the villain... I'm sure you'll have seen this too, in a yeah. sexploitation film named <laughs> Pets, uh, also seen known it. as Submission. <laughs> hmm. yep. He was so embarrassed by that film that he finally decided to come back to England to be greeted by a chorus of, Ed, where have you been? We've so oh. much work uh, yes. that you could have had here. We could have kept you busy for the rest of your life. Great. And, ironically, a call from the producers of Star Trek asking where he'd gone because they wanted him back for more episodes. Oh. Poor Ed. Curses. But while Ed was living in New York, he continued his building and interior decorating work. One evening, he was in an apartment in the Bronx wallpapering a kitchen... And the family, who consisted of a couple and their teenage daughter, went into the other room to watch the TV. Ed continued working and then stopped as he heard some familiar music coming from the other room. (laughs) He put his head round the door and there on the screen was Commander Straker and the rest of Shadow rolling out for another (laughs) adventure. Great. Now, we don't know what Ed did next. But he always seemed like pretty uh, a pretty humble man, so he probably yeah. chose to keep quiet rather than burst into the room and start pointing the TV like a madman. You never know. If the, I fa- would. <laughs> if the family were fans of the show and hadn't recognised Ed for all the time he'd been working in their kitchen, then they were probably never going to now. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, And of course, he didn't have the iconic Straker wig on, so oh, I guess that's not? maybe why they didn't recognise him. Oh. I don't think that was part of his his building yeah. garb. Okay. Um, so presumably, Ed chose to keep working, finished the job, got paid, and then left with the family completely unaware that the star of one of their favourite shows had been wallpapering their kitchen. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. So, yeah. Richard James, this begs the question, since All becoming right. an actor, a thespian, yes, yes. what is the worst job that you can speak about oh. that you've taken in that time? Uh, the worst job? Oh, well, if you live in Scandinavia... Then around about the turn of the century, 2000, 2001, you might have got a call uh, at about 10 o'clock at night, your time, from someone wanting to know all about your newly installed parquet flooring. How you rated it, how you were enjoying the experience of having the flooring in your apartment, right? and if you would recommend it to your fellow Scandinavians. Right. And that person might have been me. <laughs> what? I've done it. I've worked a few call centres in my time. I remember that was that was a call I had to make several times. But that's yeah. really specific. What, well, you did ask. Did you not have to speak, you know, no, no, Swedish no. or Norwegian no, or something? No, because they speak it. They all speak English, don't they? Because they're all much more, you know, sort of hyper intelligent than we are. Yeah, that's true. Fair enough. Yes, yes. So yeah, I've, I've had my share. I've uh, I've had an interview to work in a crematorium. Didn't get it. I mean, you know, even even when I wasn't auditioning for acting work, I still got rejected. Wow. So you can't win. 
Yeah. Well, you can't. But uh, do you know what used to bring me solace was a very similar story I remember hearing about Nicholas Courtney, who played the Brigadier in Doctor Who, of course, under John Pertwee, and uh, Tom Baker. He would take building work between series. Mm. So it's very easy, as you say, to think, well, he's playing a leading role in a TV show. He he must be rolling in it, or the work must be coming in. Well, that's not always the case. Sometimes you've got to pay the bills. Well, didn't you tell me that uh, Ray Winston on Space Bridge yes. hadn't even been working as a cabbie? That's before. right, exactly. Ray Winston, yeah. There you go. I, you know, I've even had to work for, for Big Finish. <laughs> I know. It's true. Yeah, that, it's funnily it's enough, that bad. just saying that may have uh, ah. stopped that having to happen in the future, I right. suspect. Oh, but, um, dear. Good to know. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. There you go. So, 